Hello, my name is Ian Rees and I work for Riverbed Technical Support. Today I'm going to show you how to install AR11, AppResponse 11, inside uh, VMware ESXi, which itself is running inside VMware Workstation. This environment is more stable than uh, trying to install AR11 on VMware Workstation directly, and um, although this is not recommended for production environments. It can be useful for demos or just getting familiar with the interface. Um, so, uh, assumptions I've made is you've already gone ahead and installed VMware Workstation, and on VMware Workstation, you have installed ESXi. If you haven't already done this, there is a useful video uh, and web page uh, published by VMware. Um, which explains how to do that part. Right, as you can see, I've already got uh, VMware Workstation up and running with the ESXi instance running inside it, and I've got VMware vSphere client uh, installed on the laptop, and that's now open, so I can log in to ESXi and start the installation of AR11. So what I repeat really is that, you know, for performance purposes, this is not um, a recommended setup, but it is good for getting familiar with the UI and trying a few things out, and perhaps for demos as well. So once uh, vSphere client is open, you've got your server here, and you're probably wondering what resources I have got allocated to this. Uh, to this um, host. So let's have a look. So we've got memory, we've got 8 gig of memory, storage, we've got uh, just under 100 gig of storage, and we've got uh, four CPUs allocated. So nothing too, too major there. Uh, you could try to install some more uh, uh, storage than, than that if you've got space because as we'll see later there's a need to create a volume for packet storage and I'm going to slightly cheat on that by uh, over provisioning the, um, the volume for packet storage. So let's get started. Before even beginning to uh, deploy the OBA we have to configure a special port group for monitoring. So to do that we go to the server, uh, configuration tab, networking, click on properties of the vSwitch and under ports click on add, virtual machine, change the network label to monitor and change the VLAN ID to all 4095 so it can monitor all ports, all VLANs. Click next and finish but we're not quite finished. Next step is to select the port group we've created and click edit Go to security and enable promiscuous mode. Click close and there you have it. We've created our monitoring port group. Next we deploy the virtual machine. Go file and deploy OVF template. In here, uh, you browse to the file that you've downloaded from Riverbed Support, which, as you can see, we're going to install 11.2.1 of uh, AR11. And you click Next, and Next again, and give uh, your VM a meaningful name. 
and now we're going to depart from the approved way of installing this by uh, thin provisioning so that we don't use up too much disk space this um, this means that we uh, won't get great performance but we will manage to fit this on our laptop now we come to the network configuration and we're just going to move the primary and the aux to VM network not monitor uh, ignore the warning about multiple sources and there it is complete and now we're going to allow it to deploy well the deployment uh, has completed successfully so we're going to exit close there and check uh, by right clicking on uh, steel central app response and let's have a look at the settings and you can see we've got a uh, 8 gig of memory CPU hard disk provisioned 100 gig and so at this stage what we're going to do is add another hard disk for packet storage before we start the virtual machine so we click add we select device type hard disk we uh, leave default setting to create a new virtual disk uh, this time we're going to change the disk size to 100 gig and we're going to change it to thin provisioned and we're going to get a warning about the amount of available space and um, the fact that it could freeze up the virtual machine uh, if you had more space on your laptop um, it might have been better to allocate more space uh, to the initial uh, VMware ESXi deployment uh, so that the data store could say be 200 gig and you would allocate 100 to the operating system and 100 to the packet storage I didn't have that luxury so I'm kind of accepting that if I do fill up my packet storage it could end up blocking the virtual machine um, I guess one insurance policy against that is to clone the virtual machine before setting it running so that you've always got a backup um, ready to uh, deploy should you end up um, freezing it so just tips about how to cope with uh, having you know not very much memory on your laptop but still wanting to run pretty big virtual machines uh, for demo purposes only so we're going to leave uh, the mode unticked except the default settings on this page and click finish now it says adding virtual disk uh, we're not going to wait for that to change uh, slightly confusing message if we click OK then it does indeed begin adding the virtual disk and we're now in a position where we can power it on so would uh, click on the virtual machine click start and go to the console and we can watch the boot process okay the device is booted up we're going to log in as admin the password admin and just wait for the authentication timeout
okay so it's logged in locally and we are going to run the configuration wizard no we're not we're going to go into configuration mode and run the configuration wizard give it a useful name I'm going to leave uh, DHCP on for this uh, video but you might want to set a static IP accept the defaults and click save to save the settings which are now applied so if we just do a show interfaces primary we can see we've got a primary IP address 192.168.182.131 in this case click uh, control out to come out of the console and let's go to that IP HTTPS uh, yeah. one two one six eight one eight two one three one have our login page for app response well I hope this video has been useful for you and thanks very much for watching